Good evening and welcome. I see we've got Kenneth Riley, Gary Andre, Johnny Chow, James Lung, Diana Pino, Amy S. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here this evening. <clears throat> this evening is an intro program to give you an idea about the accounting and business certificate programs. And we'll wait just about a minute or two to see who else is going to join. Uh, experience has shown that people tend to arrive in the Jada nick of time. So we will respect that and give them a couple of minutes. I'm Reynold Lukey, Chair of the Business Administration Certificate Program. And I'll be one of the speakers this evening, as well as Diane Connery will be also part of the team here. And she will be actually our lead. But <clears throat> my job is MC for this first part. All right, excellent. Have some more coming? Excellent. Want to be inclusive and make sure that we have everybody there all possible. So we'll give it, I think, one, one more minute and then we'll stop. <clears throat> Just want to <clears throat> thank you all for making time in your busy schedules on a Wednesday evening to come and listen to us. And feel free at any time, if you have questions, to put those in the chat. We will try to catch those at the end of the session. So the idea is that first Diane will give an overview, uh, then I will, uh, and uh, then, as I say, we'll be taking uh, questions at the end. So there'll be lots of time for Q&A at the end there. So you'll have a chance to hear the overview of the accounting certificate program, also the business admission administration certificate, and then we'll take it from there. All right. I think that is about it. So I want to respect everybody's time for making the time here. So <clears throat> again, I'm Ronald Lukey. My background is uh, 40 years in business, and that includes a time as a corporate litigator in New York, uh, as well as in practice with a large Fortune 50 company, United Technologies, and have been 30 plus years in executive search as well as career coaching and teaching. And uh, I have the honor of being the chair of the Business Administration Certificate Program. I teach two courses. <clears throat> One is uh, business law, and the other is the career uh, redesign course. So I have those two. And then starting off this evening, we have Diane Connery, who is chair of the accounting certificate program. And I'll let Diane take it from here. Thank you, Reynolds. Um, good evening, everybody. And thank you for joining us this evening. Um, again, um, I am Diane Connery. I um, am in charge of the accounting program. And I uh, teach two courses, just like Reynolds does. Um, one, the Intro to Accounting course, which will be offered in the winter time come January, as well as a finance, just a very short course, a four week course, um, that's an elective for other business uh, programs or for other uh, certificates as well, including uh, the business certificate that we'll be talking about. Um, so I have, uh, I am a, a CPA, licensed CPA, and I currently work for a consulting firm called uh, Grands and Associates. And I have been working mostly part-time uh, as my children have been growing up, um, but I'm back in the full-time, although right now during, during the, uh, this uh, time of uh, life that we all are experiencing right now, uh, I'm kind of working closer to part-time. All right, so uh, I'm going to start off first talking about the accounting program. So if we can have the next slide. And basically, why would you want to have or why take an accounting course? 
or have some accounting background. Well, accounting is based on numbers. So it's all in the numbers here, folks. Uh, so I just took this just this past, uh, within this past week, I just took the 2019 median pay. Um, so if you have a bachelor's degree in accounting, uh, you could start off making $70,000 a year. Um, and uh, the outlook, uh, there's a lot of jobs out there. And the biggest thing that I want you to be aware of though, because so all the data for us is in the cloud. And so we work remotely, especially right now, we are working remotely and it really does not cut our productivity. If, it, if anything, it just makes us more productive um, because we are working remotely and we can really concentrate on what we need to do. So uh, that's basically, if you decide to continue uh, uh, with a full accounting background, getting a degree, um, these are what you're looking for. If you decide to become a licensed CPA to continue on, licensed CPA or get, to get additional uh, graduate degrees in accounting, um, it, it uh, really uh, bumps up your numbers or your bumps up your salaries even more and gives you more credibility as a professional. All right, next slide, please. So if you don't decide to go the accounting, but you or don't decide or you decide to not get a degree, but you, you do enjoy accounting, um, nothing wrong with it because the numbers, as you can see, in within as long as you have a solid education or a solid knowledge of accounting and uh, just the uh, basic information about or basic knowledge of accounting, uh, you can make a very comfortable salary here. Um, granted, here we are here in Silicon Valley and it is a little tougher, but again, uh, just the fact that you have some knowledge in accounting, you can make a very comfortable living here. Um, so uh, don't, don't, uh, that helps accounting, just to have the accounting behind you, um, that helps you in so many areas. And as you can see, it's basically in the business world in general, just because accounting is what makes the world go around, uh, especially in the business world. Um, so if you have knowledge of accounting and what we do as accountants, um, then it helps you, helps everybody in the business. All right, next. So for at the UC Santa Cruz Extension, uh, we provide or we offer this accounting certificate program. And basically we have four required courses, four units each, um, uh, basically four hours, one night a week for 10 weeks uh, to cover uh, for each quarter. And these four required courses, we hope, we hope you could take them in this order. Um, but you can certainly take them out of order as well. Uh, but uh, if you can, uh, the way that we have our scheduled uh, setup for offering these courses, theoretically, you could finish the degree within a year. So if you go to the next slide here, if you wanna, there, this is our basically how we have scheduled um, our courses. So every other quarter, so the X represents every other quarter that we offer the classes. Uh, so if you start uh, with, let's say my, uh, my class, which I teach the intro to accounting one, the financial accounting, starting in winter, if you notice, you can take in succession the proper order, the intro to accounting two, then the intermediate accounting one, and then finally intermediate accounting two and be finished within a year. If you so continue, if you decide to do a class every quarter. Um, we have the, right now, since we're all teaching the classes via Zoom, virtual classes, um, we still have the scheduled set up. But if you notice uh, on the fall for my course, there's an O there, and that's purely an online class. Um, what that means is that all the presentations, all my recordings are on, um, on the website uh, that are available and you choose for that course uh, you choose to take it at uh, whenever you can. You listen to the recordings. It's not a regular course. Um, and uh, there's some check-in times, uh, conferences that we set up on a regular basis that makes me available. Um, but basically that's really ultimate flexibility. Um, the other ones, uh, they're actually all scheduled as regular courses just right now because of the pandemic where they're just scheduled three and a half hour sessions uh, for in a Zoom class. And we still do the same amount of work. Um, it's just by a Zoom instead. 
All right, so uh, you wanna, next slide. So as I'd mentioned before, uh, my class, the one that's the second item here, that's going to start up uh, in the middle of, just shortly after the middle of January. And if you notice, there's an asterisk there because right now um, certain courses uh, with the UC extension, um, they are giving a 15% discount. Uh, so please take advantage of it, especially since it's the first course. Um, uh, and, and if you continue on, then you could take the other courses. And certainly if you are in the middle of this, uh, I am paired up with uh, the intermediate or this course is paired up with the intermediate accounting one course as well. Uh, so depending on where you are, you can always pick it up, um, drop it, uh, or drop uh, your timeline of how, when you think you want to take your certificate, um, and then pick it up whenever you can. Um, so that's always helpful. I find that my students have always uh, uh, found that having that scheduled list of courses, if they have to, um, if they have to halt uh, their education for uh, whatever reason, they can always pick it up just because of how we scheduled all of our courses so that we can assure that people can get an accounting certificate in a timely pace. All right, uh, that's it for me. So Reynolds, you take it. Unmute myself, how about that? All right. <laughs> so let me just step back a second and give you an overview of where we are with respect to the business administration certificate program, one of the things that we do on a regular basis is to look at the various industries, historically very much focused on the Valley, but increasingly in this last couple of years, we've looked more broadly and said, you know, our people are going all over the place. So one of the things that we wanted to do was to identify the different industries that are, as I say, high, traditional high tech, but also manufacturing. And as a result, we've developed and identified what the requirements are that are coming from industry as a way to shape our programs and what we're offering. And one of the things which is exciting is that we're always looking at ways to improve. Uh, the courses you see today are courses that are relevant for what we believe are the coming a decade and how you can really take our programs and build your career because that's that's the whole reason for doing it. if if we can't provide you with something that's going to enhance your career it's it's not something you should be wasting your time with and we are very sensitive to the fact that you are all busy professionals people who come to UC Santa Cruz extension are people who are busy they need information they need particular points skills, what have you. And we want to provide those in the most time efficient and cost effective way that we can. So that's one of the things that our programs are constantly under review and trying to develop and give you the best possible opportunities there. Now, with that said, one of the things that we <clears throat> looked at is to say, how can we make this of greatest value to you? Okay, so let's go to the next slide. If you look at what the business certificate program is all about is it's to be your foundation to successful leadership. Because at the end of the day, if you are empowering people around you, if you are developing skills that allow you to leverage yourself, then you'll be a successful leader. And that's what we want to help you do. So again, the science is there. We use the latest management best practices. But we also want to make sure that you've got practical skills to run a business, right? We look at evidence-based methods for you to figure out how to maximize what you're doing in your business. And that can be in a large corporate environment, that can be in a small company, and also can be in, we have a lot of our graduates who go on and start their own businesses, okay? So we want to be able to there to provide you a way to really build out and enhance your skills there. Last but not least, one of the most important things about doing a program, and we really encourage this, is to build your professional network. Because at, fundamentally, at the end of the day, it's about the people you know that are going to be your long-term best investment. The quality of your network is going to drive your net worth. I'll say that again. The quality of your network is going to drive your net worth. <clears throat> so you wanna be building a quality network. And the thing that's exciting is UCSC in extension and the extended UCSC family are great places to build 
really interesting and powerful networks. So we have four different tracks. We have the business essentials. We have a financial analysis and accounting. We have management development and we have marketing business development. Now, <clears throat> before I go on, just wanna have a shout out for you know, Diane's program and the importance of the accounting, if that's a way you wanna go. Two of my sons have found that doing accounting, one you know, took a certificate program and use that as a way to move up in the financial uh, arena in his, in his organization to become the controller. The other one used courses uh, that are offered in the certificate program so that he could round out what he did in his bachelor's program so he was eligible for the CPA, which he did. He started off at a big four and is now with a financial services institution. So, you know, it's, it's things like that. And, and he's gone, and I'll just say this, it was kind of interesting. When my, my youngest son <clears throat> was a sophomore, he was originally a, a BA in, in modern languages and music. And he said, you know, dad, I've realized I'm not getting any paying internships. And, uh, but I figured finance is a good place to go. And so he pivoted and found out, you know, managed to get, you know, wind up with a BS, but he still needed extra. And that's again, where programs like Diane's are so, so powerful. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that and get that little bit extra there to, to build on that. So back to business. Well, thanks, Reynolds, for plugging my stuff. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, you didn't need me, but. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. So the philosophically, philosophically, what we have here in, these are the required business administration credit, credits here. So this is a 19 unit program. So it's, it's intense, but what you should see when you look at this is we have business law, finance, organizational development, think of human resource and how you manage teams, right? Principles of marketing, because if you don't market, and you don't sell it, your business will die. And then supply chain operations so that you understand how to run a business. So if you look at this, you're, you're getting a really solid, broad intro to business, law, finance, leadership, organizational change, marketing and operations. And that was our purpose here in developing. This was a relative, you know, something we've been working on the last couple of years is to have this kind of a program, which really gives you in a compact way, essentially what you would get in an executive MBA program. It's not the same, I won't go say that, but it does give you many of the basics there. And importantly, many of our graduates are finding that they can use these courses at other institutions as a basis for thinking, if you will, the first year of a full MBA program, or at least a good chunk of that. And again, the beauty of it is you're getting an overview of all of business, some really good deep dives into the key parts of that, and you're doing it in a cost-effective and more importantly, a time-effective basis. So that's the, the whole purpose that we have there. So these, these get you way down the line there. So next slide here. And one of the things we, we try to do, and I hope you can see this in here, is, for example, in the business administration elective, in the business essentials elective, we've got something for you every single quarter. And the idea is that if you are diligent, if you're focused, if you are you know, excited about business, you can get this done in 12 months and still be working. I'm not gonna say it's easy, but I'm speaking also from the perspective of somebody who took three years to do his MBA at night. So this is, you know, I, I wish this had been around because I, I might have, <clears throat> I might have skipped the MBA and, and saved myself a little time and a, a whole lot of money. But again, here is an example, you know, the business essentials, okay. What we do is you build on that basis of law and operations and finance and marketing, and you do more of a deep dive into negotiations and how to do international business. And, and how to really make all of that, all of that work there, because that is so important. That is so important for you to, to be able to have that focus and dive into there. And you know, there's some really cool stuff that you can learn as well. So that's the, the business electives and business essentials uh, section there that we're dealing with. Next slide, please. Here, for those of you who are interested in diving more into the marketing, you know, you're more external, maybe you're doing, 
you're, you're sitting there and you're, you're not quite sure where to go and but you, you like to do more and get out more and, and connect more with with the with the marketplace these are examples of where you can use the marketing business development uh, courses to really build on that because again if you're thinking about getting deep dives into the marketing side of things these can really help because what it does is you get the strategy but you also understand market research and where to go with that. So one of the things that we're trying in these programs, as I say, is to give you the breadth that you need to be a really outstanding general manager, but also then to give you the spikes that you want to go, whether that's operations, whether that's marketing, whether that's finance, whether that's you know, just staying in that more, more general high level basis. So this is the idea is that to give you a cost effective, time effective way of being able to really notch your skills up, level up, and really have something that's worthwhile going after. So uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, oops, one more, thank you. So here are some of the things that are going on that are coming up and you'll see that, you know, we've got the business communications that's coming up here and starting in mid-January. It's a great course that you know, really enjoy. You have my two Saturday pros, course on accelerated uh, career development and career redesign. Uh, that's coming up in March. And as I said, we just had one last weekend and had people. And that's, again, one of the positive sides to Zoom is what I've found is that I've now run it a few times now on Zoom. And we've had people from LA and from North Carolina and from New Jersey and from you know, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. You know, so again, you know, the beauty of these things is that if you're willing to pitch in there, uh, you could really get a lot out of it. Now, that being said, you know, is Zoom ideal? No, I still miss the interaction in the class and we really prefer to do that. And, but again, the beauty of it is it allows us to help you who are busy individuals to meet you where you are and give you more flexibility on it. And just to you know, recap what Diane was talking about, these courses, you know, again, enroll by December 31st, but allows you to get this 15% discount on these courses as a way to make it easier for you as well. We're trying to recognize and, and be sensitive to the fact that everybody's uh, maybe a little bit tighter on, on the cash flow these days. And so we're trying to be thoughtful about that because fundamentally UC Santa Cruz extension is there to serve the business community here and to serve people who want to get ahead in business and in finance and in the other areas that the extension teaches. And we wanna to try to be there to support you in the near term and also in the long term. So that gives you, I hope, a bit of an overview as to those two certificate programs. And I think now we can go to the next slide and here's some examples of some of the other ways that you can connect with us. I just want to point out that I think it's really great because student services, it's just really easy. Extension, right? Anything to do with that, it's really easy to grab there. Uh, if you're having a challenge there, workforce training, workforce makes it very straightforward and easy to, to figure it out. And international students also have an easy way of just reaching out to us now. So we've tried to streamline that along as well. So you've got uh, Diane's uh, contact information, you've got my information. And again, we'd both be delighted to uh, chat with you and, and connect with you if there are questions that you have and ways that we can help you on that. So that's the overview. And now we wanted to make sure that we had enough time to go for questions. So uh, let's take the questions from the chat and, and go from there. Monica, how are we doing? Hi, Reynold. Uh, we're doing good here. Um, I'm not seeing too any questions in the chat just yet, but um, if anyone does have any, feel free to unmute yourself um, on mic and jump in and ask your questions. Um, just going through here. Yeah, I don't have any questions yet. I was curious at the outset, um, does research, we've heard that there's plenty of accounting jobs, does research show that there is a shortage of uh, accountants yep. in the market? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. it's okay. hot right now. It is very hot. Uh, just having, as I'd mentioned before, having these core courses, and I forgot to mention in the presentation, but these four course, core courses, these are university level courses. So while intro to accounting one and intro to accounting two 
also take our accredited classes that go that follow through to UC Santa Cruz and also they can be accepted with other uh, universities as well. Um, because our core courses are built on the same textbooks that are being taught at the universities, um, I am aware that they also allow those courses to carry over as well. Um, so that gives just the fact that we are part of UC Santa Cruz, that gives us even more power uh, with behind our um, certificate program. Um, that being said, I do know that just having, um, I don't want to say grunts, but just having the ability or having the knowledge in accounting, um, just understanding the flow um, makes people highly in demand at the moment. Uh, so, and again, because we're remote, uh, consulting is a way that a lot of people are going as well, or just being independent contractors. Um, so if, if you are ever no. thinking about doing, going into accounting or trying to do something at least part-time, uh, we have found actually most of my part-time jobs have been as a result of going back to my former employers and asking, do you have an opening at a part-time level? Um, because they know my experience uh, they have immediately, and that's why I've been able to work part-time because I've had past experiences. And that's, again, that's why we network um, because we know people um, and we know what we need mm -hmm. to do. And so, yeah, we are not, uh, we are never out of work. We will never be out of work. Even if a company is going to go down, we are, we are the last one standing basically. The numbers are forever, yes. Yes, exactly, exactly. Somebody's, somebody's well, got to turn out the lights. <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. So you, I see in the, in the chat there, so reverse reverse there. Uh, on do companies value certificates or they want to see MBAs? Amy, that's a, an excellent question, and I would say it depends. Okay, uh, I mean I'm I'm talking from 30 years in search, and I'm talking about the fact that, for instance, for one company uh, for whom I've been doing the recruiting, I've hired 20 people in the last. Uh, Nine, nine months for this, for this startup company. And I would say that with respect to MBAs versus certificates, the question is really the knowledge. And I think if it, this is actually far more important, the MBA is interesting, but sometimes people can come at this with an idea that the MBA is going to get them the job as opposed to understanding and having the knowledge. And what the certificate does is it validates the fact that you have studied that. And one of the things that's actually more important is you've, you've been able to connect with some very interesting people on those different areas and build your network there. Because the reality of it is, it's who you know, not what you know. I, I hate to put it as bluntly as that, but it is, I've been in search for over 30 years and it hasn't changed, all right? And particularly with respect to the, the connections that you make and the way that the market has evolved, particularly over the last five years, people are looking for people who come through internal referrals. And the beauty of this is that you have the ability while you're working or doing whatever to build and expand your network and go after these types of opportunities. And they'll simply look and say, hey, who do you know? And do you know this area here? Not do you have an MBA from XYZ school, but do you know this? And, and part of it is that we're looking, the companies are looking for people who are pragmatic and get stuff done. And I'll tell you this, a lot of companies recognize the people who are doing certificate programs are doing it in addition to their regular work. And somebody who displays that kind of energy, enthusiasm, commitment, that says a great deal to any employer and I think is, is one of the things which allows you to say, hey, I don't have the MBA, but I have all of this information and you can actually talk about it articulately. And that's why we created the business management certificate program to give you those key skill sets so that you can talk to about uh, these, these different areas and, and talk about it effectively that you understand operations, finance, legal, HR, et cetera. And you know, that, that's so important there. So hopefully that gives you some idea there, Amy. And I, and I also want to- I, I also- a number of hours there if you want. <laughs> yeah, no, so, no, it's all right. So I also want to point out the beauty of having uh, with our courses, it, it's, it's more of a natural progression out of all of our classes, whether they be on online or 
back in the classroom is the fact that we're in Silicon Valley, we network like crazy. Um, so Brett Layton is on the uh, in here as well. He's also an instructor, one of my accounting instructors and LinkedIn is an excellent way of having people connect uh, just because it's, it's amazing. Once you have the connections available and that's really the real plus that a lot of people have um, or the experiences that they have with the UC Santa Cruz Extension, taking courses from the UC Santa Cruz Extension, because they're able to connect with people in Silicon Valley with like individuals taking the same courses, um, and they might be in a different industry altogether, but they know other people as well. Um, so it's those connections that are important. And the fact that we forgot to mention, Brennan, we have to talk about our instructors here. All of our instructors we are all working professionals. So besides telling you about all the theoretical stuff that goes behind all the, um, all the important information that you need to know, um, we give you the practical experiences as well. So we will tell you our, our hardships. We will tell you our funny stories. Um, it, uh, some things that you just don't realize that happens in the business world, the things that make the paper, we'll analyze it like current events. Um, that's what we do in the classes. So it's a working classroom. Um, we try to put current events into, we try to phase it in besides the textbook, what we have to teach in the first place, but we also try to um, make it more um, uh, relationship or more practical for you and be able to apply your knowledge. And in fact, a lot of people do apply their knowledge after the first night of the class. Thanks, Reynolds and Dan. There are there are a few other questions coming in, and and I actually have some from uh, the registration from early on. Okay. So um, first, it looks like there was one that was missed, and um, Brett is asking what should we plan for the number of hours a week. Um, maybe by course would make sense to answer. <laughs> My accounting courses are tough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you if you if you get it you get it, the light bulb will go on. But if you don't get it, uh, it's constant practice. Um, so I would say anywhere between four to six hours a week studying, um, applying it as best you can. Again, these are regular college courses that I teach. Um, so we're going to have just as much rigor as that regular college course. Uh, so, but my classes are tough. I recommend that you only take, you don't try to take two accounting courses every quarter. You just take one accounting course every quarter. You could take any other classes as well, but at least just, or just one accounting course. Reynolds? I mean, I think I'd, I'd agree. It, these are college courses. You have to put in, I think typically rule of thumb is at least the same, if it's a three unit course, it's expectation will be that there's somewhere between three and six hours a week, it's gonna vary, that you're gonna to have to put in uh, to that course there to be able to, to master it and, and do well. I mean, it's, some people it's easier, they can get by on three hours, some people are gonna take six hours and some people are gonna be in between there. So I think that's really a question of how, how far and how deep you go. But these are, there is, these are rigorous courses and, and we're expecting people to do some real work there. That said, we also recognize that, you know, we're, you know, people people miss classes because they're sick or they've got a business trip or what have you, and you know, we, we try to be understanding about those sort of things as well. So, again, we're not not hard and fast there, but yes, we expect people to put the effort in. I just want to jump in on on Brett's just follow up on would you say LinkedIn is important or essential? One of the things I think that's w what we teach, for example, what I teach in my course on on career redesign is LinkedIn is just part of your personal brand and learning how to use and build your personal brand, how to build your network and your personal brand is recognizing that LinkedIn is a dynamic marketing device. And that's a very important and very critical and essential part of your, your skill sets and how you present yourself and how you build your career. Because one of the things to remember, and that's where the extension is so valuable 50% of the population in the United States is in their current job less than four years. If you want to get 75% of the population, it's at seven years. What, and what that means is that you are going to be changing jobs every four to five years, probably for the rest of your life. And the other reality is you're going to be working to 75. So you may as well recognize that you're going to be working longer. You're going to be changing. 
But the only way that you're going to be relevant is by continuing to learn and develop new skills. You know, stem cells was not a word that was used until 1998. Okay, so you know, the things that we're talking about now, computer viruses, again, 15 years old, you know, things of that nature, we, we just are, are, are need to stay on top of these things. So lifetime learning is going to be a critical part of how you stay relevant as you go forward in your career. And that's where the extension is so powerful because it allows you and gives you the chance while you're in one situation to continue and build on the next set of skills that you need to pivot and, and build your career from there. Because again, you will, as I say, you will be doing at least five or six different careers during your working lifespan. So you may as well do it because you're having fun and doing what you want to do as opposed to, uh, I think it's time for me to go back and learn how to run a coffee shop. So. <laughs> Thanks, Reynold. Uh, it looks like Johnny is asking, um, speaking of experience, how would one build up experience when just getting started in accounting? So, Diane. Sure. So, uh, the easiest way, and actually, this is if you are currently working in a regular business, and if you are an existing employee of that company, walk into the accounting department. Um, that's that's a, the easiest way. And uh, you can actually offer, and if you just happen to be one of those that has to prepare an expense report, if uh, you learn how to do that expense report properly, uh, and the accounting department sees that you know how to do your expense reports properly, um, offer your assistance while you are at that job. Um, offer to help out in that if you have some downtime, offer to possibly get some additional experience in that accounting department for your business because one thing that will help you is the fact that you already know your business if you're working for that company you already know what the business is now you're just learning little bits of how the business is on the back side the accounting that, uh, that goes behind the business so and if you that's like the easiest way of doing it now how to get the experience if you are not working and or if you're transitioning, you're trying to do something else, completely different something else, um, these classes are, are excellent ways. As, I, as we mentioned before of networking, um, there are plenty of, you know, I don't wanna say internship opportunities. Uh, we do have, um, I believe the UC Extension, we do have some kind of link to potential job opportunities that get posted to us. Um, but we do have some availability that's open. Um, but the other thing that is, again, through the networking, just seeing what people need uh, and just offering uh, to do a little bit extra um, just to gain that kind of experience. Um, so that's really, again, we all start at the bottom and this is how we do it. And then just as uh, you start building your skill set people will take notice and uh, they'll notice, especially those of you who have to do an expense report, if you turn in that perfect expense report and there are no issues with it, uh, your accounting department will love you for it and they <laughs> will ask you to be their expert uh, expense report person. And so that's kind of just, just little bits here and there or just understanding it um, and being able to apply it and just daily and in your daily uh, practices as well, that helps quite a bit. Excellent, thank you. I have another, um, I guess, accounting question. Um, are, are online accounting programs introduced such as QuickBooks and how does accounting ca carry over to the data analysis job? We actually had quite a few of those questions in the, in the registration. Yep, no. So uh, we do not specifically have a course in uh, that helps or that helps or that teaches you QuickBooks or any of the accounting software classes. I do because I teach the intro to accounting one course and because my practical experience on my day, during my day job is using QuickBooks a lot, I do put it in there. Um, and I do, if somebody asks me a QuickBooks question, I, we do address it at that time. I do put a, a, examples. Um, of course, I take off all the, uh, all the important names and the company names, but I do put the information up there for people to see how QuickBooks works. Um, but we do not specifically have a QuickBooks class. Um, I find that 
once you know the process that I teach in my intro to one intro to accounting one class, um, once you understand the process, then it's actually easier to understand any accounting software because you are the black box by processing the information yourself internally, then it's easier to understand the accounting software. It just all the accounting software, everyone is a little different from each other. It's just understanding the nuances between them. Okay, and now when you said mentioned something about the data analytics. Yeah, how does, how does accounting carry over to data, data analysis jobs? There's a lot of numbers, <laughs> like data <laughs> analytics as well. The fact that we as accountants process the information consistently, it helps with the data analytics. So that when in data analytics, there's a portion of accounting that we do called financial analysis. And data analytics goes closely with that. The fact that we can see the certain patterns within our accounting information, the financial analysis side, data analytics just pulls that information for us. If things are getting entered the right way. Um, so there is a relationship between the two and it, it's more the analysis and looking at the trends of how the information is being presented. Um, so data analytics actually closely results, uh, closely work with financial analysts. And again, it's the matter of knowing how the information is getting processed. And once you know that process of accounting in your head, then it's easier to understand all this, all this other stuff that's going around. Excellent. And then I have one more question, and that is, uh, well, this person was wants to know what kind of business administration roles are there in big tech companies? What are what are some jobs that they can look into? <laughs> well, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that is really the purpose of the business certificate program is to give you the basic tools to be able to go and develop your career as you want to growing in the in your as a professional in a sense how to go from being an individual contributor whether it's in the operations department whether it's in the finance department whether it's in the marketing department basically you start as an individual contributor what the business administration certificate does is it allows you to gain the skill set so you have credibility so you can contribute in the team discussions. Because in business, one of the things that's really important is to have somebody who has a, an overview, has a strategic vision, aligns themselves with the, the values and the vision of the company, and then is able to do their job, but also is respectful and thinking about, well, what am I doing that's impacting my other department? As Diane was alluding to, how does my expense report impact the accounting department? How does what I do in operations impact marketing? How does what I do in marketing impact finance? How does, how does my sales activity impact what the law department has to worry about, All right? So the idea is we want you to have an understanding of the company as well. So this is not about <clears throat> plugging you into a single role, but this is to provide and give you the tool toolkit for the rest of your business life. I mean, the old it's the old joke, right? If, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem is a nail, right? We want to give you the hammer, the saw, the screwdriver, and oh, by the way, and we've got this boroscope that allows you to look down pipes, you know, so you can be a plumber. It, it's just all of those things, okay? So we want this breadth of experience here to be able to allow you to go and expand. And picking up on what Diane said, which allows you, which allows you <clears throat> after you've been a couple of years in one department and you're saying, you know, I'd be kind of interested in what's going on in that department over there. And you can always poke over and you can start to have the discussion. And if you've had the experience with the business, manage, business certificate program, you are able to have a reasonable discussion and ask valuable questions and say, hey, what you're doing over there is, you know, I had this class and we were talking about this. How does what we were talking about, does that impact you? And it allows you internally to build your network across departments. And if you are good interpersonally, interdepartmentally, 
everybody will want to be your friend. And you will have no lack of job opportunities because people say, hey, somebody who sits there and thinks about the big picture and wants to help others, those are gold. Those are gold. And, and, and if you build that in, build your network and build your philosophy that you are there to help others. If you come at life with, you're there to pay it forward to help others, it pays off enormous dividends in the long term. You don't see it right away because you don't plant and harvest in the same season. You plant the seeds and you have to water them or what have you, you have to put the time in and then it grows and then you can harvest. Because if you try to, 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 to harvest when you plant, all you're doing is digging up seed. So again, what we're providing you with is opportunities on how to plant, nourish the plant, do the watering, do the fertilizing, build your careers. And that's what we're trying to do and help you this. And, and Diane's accounting does that in a very thoughtful, dedicated way. And we try to do that in the business certificate as well. So hopefully that'll give you some ideas as to how you can use the certificate going forward. And you know, keep coming back for, for new courses in the future as we continue to evolve. That's what we're here for. Thanks so much, Reynolds and Diane. Um, I, oh, it looks like, do you have UC staff taking your classes as professional development uh, paid by the unit? Um, so the UC staff, there, there are some discounts that are available on our website and that's how we're able to kind of help staff out to take courses. Um, and then as far as paid by the unit, you'd have to check in with their unit, your, your specific unit for professional development. Each, each department is different. So that's what I would encourage you to do, Carrie. Just check in, check in with your supervisor, see if they have that professional development budget for you to use. Um, and, and just check back on our website. We are trying to put out um, various discounts for different uh, courses. I believe there will be another one in the springtime. So just, just keep checking back our website. Awesome. Um, so I think these are all the questions that we have. If there are any more, please jump in. Diana is asking, every company is different handling accounting. How do I prepare for it? The biggest, uh, the biggest thing is uh, that all accountants be aware of, and Reynold teaches this as well, I'm sure in, in, in all of his classes and all of his courses, is the fact that we need to be flexible, just kind of like what we're doing right now with the UC Extension. We're having this information session on Zoom. We need to be flexible. So all accountants, all businesses, they all handle accounting differently as well. So we all know once, we all know basically after taking all the required accounting courses or at least taking my course, you're going to know the entire business cycle, the accounting cycle on how it works, the details or how everybody processes or just the policies and procedures behind that accounting circle varies again by business to business. It's the ability to have a strong knowledge of how we're supposed to end up with the accounting information that we have but then being, uh, being uh, cognizant of the fact that we have to follow these procedures in order for us to get there. So flexibility is key. Um, and, uh, and again, with accounting, uh, they, a lot of people try to give you a lot of information now at one time um, and it's the ability to be flexible. Uh, we do have to say no at times uh, and letting your supervisor be aware that you have a lot of stuff on your plate um, that it's hard to do. So it's, it's uh, again, the flexibility, making sure everybody's aware of each other's job duties um, and to be able to pick up possibly and do some cross training across the board and uh, account, other accounting functions because people always go on vacation, people are out. So you just have to pick up the slack. Um, so it's just being open um, to be able to do whatever's necessary. And as a result, being able to just say, yes, I'll try my best and learn in the process, um, that actually opens a lot more opportunities, a lot more doors for you just going down into the future. So let's see, Brett, you should just answer this stuff here. So uh, financial reporting, we all have to follow GAAP. GAAP is considered generally, it's an it's a, um, acronym for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. Um, then how do you get there? Uh, 
how do you get there? Can it, can it be, and is it different? So with uh, all the accounting courses, we try to teach you US generally accepted accounting principles. But again, because it is an extension course and we are all working individuals, we'll tell you live stories. We will tell you things that we have seen. We will tell you the horror stories. We will tell you how companies are not doing accounting principles and what they follow, how they follow it, uh, what kind of procedures that they do so that hopefully you will be and be ethical enough. And uh, of course, I forgot to mention, ethics are taught in all of our accounting courses as well, or as well as all the business courses. So um, we all have to make uh, decisions when we are in all, in all business uh, situations. Um, but uh, we do teach you technical, uh, general accepted accounting principles, but the fact that we will also let you know about the decision-making process when we are not following generally accepted accounting principles and what can be done, what's mitigated, uh, what are the results or what are the end results of not following it, especially when it comes to tax time or with uh, governmental agencies. All right, Reynolds, you wanna talk about your courses really quickly about the ethics portion? Well, the, in, 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 the, in the legal legal part, it's ethics are like, Kind of fundamental, you know. So it's, you know, the ethics ethics are there as as absolutely every day is, and because that's at the end of the day you need to follow the law. Very good. But one of the things that we do is is to help in, in the business law course is to understand where it comes from, and also that law is dynamic; it is changing. Uh, you know, in the accounting side, you've got your FASB, and they keep coming up with new ideas, and in the legal side, you know, we have judges and we have legislatures, my goodness, we have legislatures always coming up with new ideas and new rules and new laws and what have you. So, and it's also important to understand what's, what is the law, what is supposed to be going on, but also to help people understand and build a sense of what it should be. Because part of what is dynamic about the law is that it is changing and it changes in reflection to what people believe is realistic and also what they want to see as the new realities. So it's it's important for people to have a sense of, of ethics, what's important, what's appropriate. And one of the things that's good about it to, to allude to that Diane was talking about was by giving you practical experience and, and, and vignettes from real life that the instructors all do, we hopefully impart to you the confidence when you take this out that you go and, and trust yourself well enough that if you have a question that you ask the question. And the reason that can be important was that, for example, my one son, the first day as, 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 an, as a tax auditor, he was at a bank. His first day at about two o'clock in the afternoon, he discovered what was a $400 million error. And it was one of those things that he had the confidence to be able to ask the question in a nice polite way and said, this seems a little unusual to ask it of his, of his manager. And his manager said, that does look unusual. And they asked the partner and the partner said, good catch. First day, 400 million, <clears throat> well done. And that's one of the things that we, we want you to do is to think about, you know, is this real, is this ethical, is this appropriate? And give you the confidence to, to make sure that you're doing the right things and, and teaching you that as a get-go. Because uh, <clears throat> one of the things you learn in business law is you can no longer say, my boss told me to do that as an excuse, okay? Those days are gone. You are expected to have a, a moral compass, a sense of the law, so that, and that's why we have whistleblower uh, acts, is so that you maintain that strong moral compass and that strong ethical compass. And that's super important. And we do have that as a part of the, the business law course to make sure that people are aware of that and, and feel comfortable with that and feel empowered to do that. And that is so important. It, it goes back to, to, for example, by now hospitals have these check-in programs so that the first, you know, the nurse who's there or the, the nurse's aide who's there the first day can ask the surgeon, have we done the check? And that's one of the things that's important. We want to give you that sense of a confidence and ability to understand what's really going on. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a great evening. Good night. Good night.